This tutorial is all about esters and how esters are used in food flavorings, in perfumes and in other products. Now this picture of some sweets shows some pear drops. Now most pear drops are actually flavored with pear essence but some pear drops actually don't contain any pears at all. They contain a chemical that tastes of pears and this chemical is called an ester, E-S-T-E-R. You need to know how esters are made and that they're used in some perfumes. You then need to know why a perfume needs particular properties and also why perfumes are very volatile, in other words, that you can smell them. Making an ester in the lab is quite straightforward. We would start off with a boiling tube and into that boiling tube we would add three substances. We would add a small amount of an alcohol, for example ethanol, and we'd also add in another component to make it, which would be an organic acid. And that would be any acid which is made from living things, for example ethanoic acid, which is found in vinegar. Then we'd add a small quantity, just a few drops, of a catalyst, and the catalyst that we would use would be a strong acid like sulfuric acid. We've now got the mixture of components in the bottom of our tube. We then warm the reaction up by placing it in a warm beaker of water. Not hot water in case this causes any of the components to uh, boil away. And we leave it then for around about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we'd pour that out into a beaker of cold water and we'd then be able to smell cautiously a new compound that's been made, which has got a very fruity, aromatic type of smell, and this is called an ester. You don't need to know any specific reactions between any particular chemicals, but you do need to know that the reaction is between an alcohol and an organic acid to make two products, an ester and water. Our ester, which is made, is used for two main things. First of all, it's used for making perfumes and secondly, it's used as a solvent for example, in nail varnish. Esters, therefore, have to have very specific properties, uh, particularly for use in perfumes, because we need to be able to smell a perfume. In order to smell a perfume through our nose, we need to be able to get the vapor in from somebody's arm or neck or whatever. So the perfume has to be able to evaporate and then travel to our nose by diffusion. Esters therefore have to be volatile liquids. They have to evaporate easily at room temperature. But there are also other properties that perfumes must have. Those properties are summarized here. So not only must the perfume be able to evaporate easily so that it can easily travel to our nose and so we can smell it easily, it must be non-toxic which means that it mustn't poison the user or make them ill in any way. It mustn't react with water because, of course, we all sweat naturally, even ladies, and so it mustn't react with perspiration. It mustn't irritate the skin or cause any allergic reactions or cause any harm. And it must be insoluble in water so that it doesn't dissolve very easily and doesn't wipe off very easily. All liquids are made of molecules which are mixed together. Now, in order to hold those molecules together in the liquid, they must have some sort of attraction which is holding them together. The attractions between the molecules of the esters are very weak. And therefore, it doesn't take a great deal of energy to separate one molecule from another. But there must be sufficient energy to overcome the attraction of these molecules in the liquid. 
And this energy normally comes from the warmth of a person's skin that causes the molecules to start evaporating. So, perfume molecules must be made of molecules like esters which have only got weak attractions between the molecules so that they can evaporate easily and be smelt easily. Such liquids are called volatile liquids. Here's a couple of GCSE questions. Feshner makes a perfume. The perfume she makes is an ester. She uses an acid in her experiment. What other chemical must she use? Well, the other chemical she would use would be an alcohol. Secondly, a property that a perfume should have is that it easily evaporates. Write about the ease of evaporation of perfumes. In your answers, you should write about the energy of particles and attractive forces. Well, we might say that there are weak attractions between the perfume molecules. Which are easily broken. When the perfume is warmed on the skin, the molecules gain sufficient energy overcome these attractions.